no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. At the center of it all it's you that I see. It's you that I see. At the center of it all, it's you that I see. It's you that I see. There is power in your name. At the center of it all, you that I see, you that I see.
there's power in your name Miracles happen in your name Seasons in your head You call for light Out of darkness You don't need a man To be the God you were But you have chosen To call me no more Let's sing it again You've got time and seasons in your head. Let's sing the verse again. You've got time. Again, you've got time and seasons. You've got times. Uh, come on, sing it from your spirit. Out of darkness, you don't need a man to be the God you were, but He has chosen to call you. From beginning to the end There's no place for argument You are God all by yourself You are God, you are God There's no place for argument You are God all by yourself Sing it again and tell him you are God you are God, you are God. Hey. There is no place for you. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for you. You are God, oh, by yourself. I lift my hands to heaven with my heart surrender and I say again to my soul you God of all when the seas are red you will tame them with your mouth 
Let's sing it. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. The Savior is not me.
my soul longs for you. Hey, Oh, Salamalalego. Turn us for water, so my soul longs for Whatever and ever is. Come on, give him a mighty hand of praise. Not like that. Clap of free. Celebrate God and thank Him because you are here. You are alive. And He is about to do you good. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Hey, 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 hey. Glory. Hey. Manu barade goza barade gata. Shopatala ho. Matoro morodo gota. Saleko marando zigete. Sorry rala do gondi zeka. Poshante zumo prala hita la barate. Mashori rakoda nderege zoka pata. Sherele gona. Thank you for the liberty. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the health. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. We are excited about what God is doing in our lives today. Thank you, choir. Clap for them and they smart. Yeah. Banner of choir. Thank you. Greet your immediate neighbor on the left and on the right and tell him, I don't believe you have COVID. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're welcome to yet another service. Uh, yeah, these services are like, praise God. Uh, many of you can't wait. <laughs> praise God. I'm excited. Yes, thank you for coming. Can I see first time visitors if you're here for the first time? Put up your hand. Oh, you see? They even booked a seat for you. That's how special you are. Good to meet you. Yes, you're going to enjoy. You'll never go back again. Praise God. I know. Hallelujah. Okay, let me bless your offering right now. Father, I thank you for the most generous people in the world. I pray that you may supply all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Amaze them because this is the hour of the manifestation of the light of sonship. That can only be so and not otherwise. And for some it is already happening. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed and believed and all saints said. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. So allow me to go straight to the word. Because um, I want to also take some time to pray with you after service. Even if it's five minutes. Because I feel something is moving tonight. Something is moving tonight. Something is moving tonight. Now. Thank you. Now. Um, Paul is worried about the church. And his biggest worry is not the demons that are tormenting them in their family. That his biggest worry is not the trouble that they have in that time. Their biggest worry is not whether they went to school or they have a job. Their biggest worry is not the trouble in their household. Paul says his biggest worry is that he fears, least like the serpent, beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds 
should be corrupted from the simplicity which is in Christ. I love that portion of scripture because for as long as I have lived and certain things started to throw light on my spirit, I cannot express how overwhelming it has become to understand God and to see the multitudes of believers who are across the world who do not have a clue just how simple salvation was supposed to be. And because many of us are not able to deliver the results that the faith desires, we start to build excuses around why things are not working the way they should work. And unfortunately for some of us, we even develop doctrines around how God works and whichever way he works. And the Bible says, like in Isaiah, that the, leader, the leaders destroy the people. The leaders destroy the people. So, you look at Christianity across the world and you are disturbed at the results or the answers were given in the world. Recently, I was sharing with a group of people and I gave them an example. And I said that the recent statistics, if you go and Google them, for example, how many followers does Facebook have? Many of you will see close to about 2.9 billion, slightly above that, 2.9 billion followers, Zuckerberg. And if you Google the number of people in the world who profess to be Christian in the world, there are 2.7 billion people. That means that the idea of that boy is followed more than the name of Christ, if that is so. Well, there might be discrepancies, plus or minus, hypothetical. Because you'd say, are you sure? Are you sure they counted every Christian? What about those who are getting born again every week? And I could agree with you. But I'm speaking with what I have read currently. That Christianity is about 2.7 billion people on the face of the earth. And guess what? Roman Catholicism is one billion of that. It's one billion of that. Do you know what that means? The rest of the half in the world that scream in stadiums, that speak in tongues, that jump and write notes when they are standing, are in the other one point seven. And they tell you the born again believers, you and I, are around 800 million, if at most 800 million. Are you following what I'm saying? That means that as a church, we have not yet done enough in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in that 800 or so, or maybe less or more, we are already divided. Some are for Apollos, some are for Paul. You understand what I'm saying? Some are for the other color, others are for the other color, some are for the other man, others are for the other woman. So, those are the things that disturb my spirit. And I say, God, why is it so? Why are Christians poor? Why are Christians beggarly? Why are Christians struggling? Why are believers looked at as lost in many ways? As some of you might not know yet, but you'll soon realize the world was once divided into an empire. And then from being an empire, it broke into nations. And now if you study what is happening in the world with the wars that are taking place, if you're spiritual, you would tell that the world is going back to the empire system. The Ottoman Empire, of course, preceded by your Hezbollah, Hamas, Al-Qaeda, the Muslim Brotherhood, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all of that is trying to rebuild the caliphate. China is establishing itself as an empire. 
Britain has broken off Europe because they want to establish the British Empire. You're hearing conversations of our leaders on the continent of Africa of unification of certain parts of the continent because we're going to go back to that system one day. I, I've seen it. I've prayed about it. I've seen it. The things that I see these days scare me. Recently, I had a very intense vision about the rapture. Let me tell you, maybe people have said this for thousands of years. But it is true. Jesus is about to return. It is true. And so, a lot is happening. We don't know how many days we have. But whatever days we have on the earth, we must shine. We must live to the fullest of what God has given us by potential, design, gifting, and nature to do in this world. You move in different nations of the world and see what they do, even without our God. And then you come back to the narrative of a Christian and your heart breaks. And yet we have all of these exceeding, the Bible says, great promises, for by them, the Bible says we partake of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lusts. So we expect that when we read things like you shall be the head and not the tail, that must be true. When he says that the path of the just shines bright and bright unto a perfect day, that must be true. When he says that I will give you the treasures of the secret places, the hidden places, that must be true. Because down there he says that you might know that I'm the Lord your God. When he says that I give you power to make wealth that you may establish the covenant that you made with your forefathers, he means it so. When he says that you are a chosen generation, a peculiar or a strange people, who are foreordained that you should show forth the praises of the God who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. He is saying that when we, what makes us peculiar is not how we pray. It is the demonstration of God's glory that works on our lives. It brings forth the praises of God. It is the wisdom of God operating on our lives. It is the influence, the power, the authority by which a child of God must work. In fact, the Bible says now creation is groaning exceedingly for the manifestation because it was brought subject to bondage against its own self. The field was meant to respond to the king. So the Bible says, for the king too was an advantage to the field. But at the fall of, Sa of Satan, he wasted a lot. And then he put man in the garden. Then he told him, replenish the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over it. I have given you power over everything that is above, that is creeping on the, on, on the ground and that is under the ground. God gave us dominion. Dominion should be a very important conversation, especially in this day. Because much as many of us are speaking it, many of us have a big misconception about that victory that we ought to have in Christ. If today in 2022, we're still giving testimonies of getting money to do your hair, there's still a problem in the church. God elevate our testimonies. Somebody shout hallelujah. If today we can still give testimonies of somebody paying your tuition, that's okay, but God elevate our testimonies. We are not saying that we are not grateful of what God is doing. But we want to hear testimonies from certain believers. Wherewith when people hear, it shakes them. They shudder and say, who is this man? Who is this woman? Hallelujah. Glory to God. We want to hear that the richest man in the world is tongue speaking. Kabaro di gabatela. Sotalaba. Rento gobodolo di geterepa. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because we know how to use the money. It's not for gain, but it's for expansion of the kingdom of God. We want to hear that the most, the most, the best doctor in the world is born again. That the cures of this world are found through men who speak in tongues. That's what it means to be the head and not the tail. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
We want to hear that the greatest change in here is a born again woman and she's a choir in her church. That is what we want to hear. Somebody shout hallelujah. The biggest oil dealer in the world. We want to hear that she is tongue speaking. He is demon chasing. And he knows how to face his God and believe for bigger. We want to hear that the president of that nation, oh, he's fasting for 90 days. That the prime minister of that nation is doing a crusade. Do you believe it? Somebody shout hallelujah. I always tell people, but one day I made up my mind to believe God. I made up my mind to believe God. And I refuse in my spirit to settle for less. If you come in my head, some of you will run out. Because the things that I feel in my spirit, they are, oh yeah, rado bodo, go salamando, go sipa. They are so big. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. And that will mean that we'll have to instruct differently. Because whatever they, instruct, they have instructed us so far has not worked. Somebody shout hallelujah. That means we have to pray differently. Because this far we have prayed, it has not yet worked. That means we have to preach differently. Because this far, it has not worked like we want it to. And again, please don't get me wrong. It's not that I don't appreciate what we have received from those that have gone ahead of us. The shadows are big by whom we stand. But I believe when they look at us also, they expect a glory to glory. But my generation is not just ready to take from glory to glory. My generation wants to change status quo. Because sometimes glory to glory would mean they promoted you from a job that was giving you $5,000 to a job that was giving you $6,000. That is not what I'm talking about. Shifting from a three-bedroom house into a five-bedroom three house. Thank you, Lord. But that is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the power that takes over nations. I'm talking about the power that shakes generations. I'm talking about the power that affects stock exchange markets, NFTs, blockchain technology, cryptocurrencies, the internet of things. Oh, big data. I'm talking about something that is going to shake the internet. I'm talking about something that is going to change the automobile industry, that is going to change the media industry. That is what I'm talking about. But how can we have that kind of conversation? How can we have that kind of conversation when we have failed to understand that God has set us that way and we were never made to fail? Christians were never made to fail. I know some of you accept it, but Christians have never been made to fail. We have been created to succeed and everything we do, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and he maketh manifest the servant of his knowledge by us in every place. That's a deep thought. That's a deep thought. That's a mature text. Listen, he says he always, underline the word always, italicize it and bold it, put it in your heart. He says he always causes us he always causes us. He doesn't always try for us. He always causes us. That means that there's a deliberate force in the Godhead that pushes you to always triumph. Somebody shout hallelujah. And the Bible says, and he maketh manifest the server of his knowledge by us in every place. That means the world can only know God by what is happening in our lives. Who has understood this? The world can only understand God by what is happening in our lives. In our lives. In our lives. In our lives. So, whatever the world will be, the, the world will know about God, it's through us. That's what the Bible says. He says, all that has been known of God has been revealed unto them. Everything that has been secret now has been made manifest unto them. He says, for God has showed it unto them. Even the Godhead, that men are without excuse. That means everything that should be known by God, he has given us through the person of Jesus Christ. Please don't just shout about this. 
process it. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead, so that they are, men are without excuse. We are the supposed to manifest the glory of God to full. That we don't have an excuse. Why? Because there is a power that always, but many of you don't believe it. Many of you agree with your minds, mental assent, but you don't believe it in your heart. 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 I'll tell you a story that excited me this morning. Yes, a very simple story, but the beginning of many things of what this gospel can do. I met a lady online a few years ago who had lost her marriage, living in a shelter with her two children. Life was bad. I mean bad. Bad. Somewhere in Europe. Bad. And they were living uh, on little small donations. And then this woman landed on the summons of Fanero. And then she started chewing on these things. And then one day, she was listening to one of those sermons of mine. Huh? There's a sermon, it's in the local language, it's called in Zingabi Waya. I think I need to give you an English version. Somebody shout hallelujah. And she, she told me, I was sharing with my wife, I showed her the text. This lady one day woke up and told people, I bought a car. Oh, congratulations, but you don't have a job. You have no food. Where would you get that money? God gave me. I'm just giving you an example. God what? Gave me. And then, the next day they see her going on the metro, in the train, or in the bus. Hey, what's up with your car? It's at home. Okay, what car is it? A BMW. Oh, okay. So they wait. And she tells me, some people even start, you know, having her, you know, attacking her and dissing her. You know, you're lying, you're playing church and it's many things. And so she told me, when I heard a sermon, I went and bought everything connected to a car. Washing shampoo. What? Everything that I could afford. That I could afford. Now I want you to listen to this. That I could afford. If I can buy a machine that can wash it, I buy it, I put it home. She bought everything that cleans, that maintains her BMW. Are you following? So yesterday, she sends me a, video, a picture and somebody was led to buy her <laughs> a BMW. Now, this is big and I'll tell you why. It's not about the BMW. It's the fact that somebody bought without money. So when the Bible says wisdom answereth all things and, and, and is a defense and money is a defense, wisdom is a defense and money is a defense, where money was not, the wisdom of God defended the testimony of Jesus Christ. Now, when he says in Isaiah, for everyone, he says, that has no money, come and buy without money. Let me explain this. Let me explain this. It means that God does not understand the currencies of the world in dealing with a blessing upon you. He doesn't understand it. It's not the language of God. It is secondary. It's not primal. He doesn't need you to have money to give you anything. If you got this, if you got this, if you got this, if you understood this, something would change from today. Now, even the language buy, we're talking about anything that is in the form of buying. He says, it does not need to come with a value man place on the idea, money. He knows how to do it. He says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Now, I told her, I'm excited that you have the car. Because see, in my spirit, I'm thinking she has learned a law. She has learned a principle in the spirit. 
She has learned a principle. That's how everything else is created. When you understand that law, you will learn to create. Some of you are waiting for God to part the sea. And God is telling Moses, Moses, part the sea. God is telling Moses, Moses, part the sea. I'll teach about it one day. Moses, he's telling Moses, part the sea. You're telling God, part this sea. He's saying, Moses, part the sea. Stretch out your hand with your stick, Moses, and part the sea. The sea. Some of you are still praying, Rapa, Bogo, 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 for the sea to part. Are you hearing me? That's your problem. You're not participating. You're passive. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, somebody says, I have a car. Oh, Badega, Sora Balade. I'm a success. I am healthy. I am wise. My marriage is good. My child can't die. Do you know what that means? Somebody shout hallelujah. It's only because many of us don't understand the covenant we've been given. It wasn't about the car. It was about the principle that bought without money. And that principle that can give you power over men without necessarily standing in a certain position in the world. It's the same thing. It's saying it's not the horse. It's not the chariot. That's another sermon I'll preach one day. It's your trust in me. To wake up and know that I might have friends here in high places. But that even if I did not have them, there is a law by the Spirit that can allow me to move these things by the grace of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. So I told her, go now to something bigger. Not car. Remove car out of your head. Build a ministry with that mind pastors somebody shout hallelujah build a ministry with that mind build a marriage with that mind hallelujah you're buying it let me tell you let me some of you don't know our story some of you don't know our story some of you don't know our story when we were in the MTN arena sitting 1200 people I called my leaders and I told them that we need equipment of more than 50,000 people. When was still 1,200? And during that time, <laughs> the money that was coming in could not buy that equipment. You understand what I'm saying? But because I believed it, in my spirit I saw it, I started to buy anything necessary for a 50,000 and above congregation before we went there. And do you know what I began with? Two Canon cameras. And I flew to Hong Kong to just buy two Canon cameras. Couldn't I send them through somebody? I was exercising myself. And then I got these two cameras and I told them, you're the beginning. Nobody has equipment like we have in this nation. I'm telling you, I've spoken to the best. <laughs> I've, nobody, that's the truth. I'm not speaking even faith. Ask those boys, they know what I'm talking about. But where did it begin from? We were providing for you, such that when you're in the back, you hear. This is not all we have. This is just for the service. Somebody shout hallelujah. There is way, way more. Way more. And you know what? We're still buying. Because every time I close my eyes, do you understand what I'm saying? God has not called us to fail in our faith. In Hebrews, the eighth chapter, Paul the apostle connects to the prophetic word that was given to Jeremiah. And those of you who want to read it, you'll probably go to Jeremiah 31 from the 31st verse to the 34th. But I might not have time for that because I have a lot to share. But he says this in, in Hebrews chapter 8, the 6th verse. The Bible says, he has obtained a more excellent ministry. Who is that? Jesus. That means... There is a ministry of the Old Testament 
and there's a ministry of the New Testament and it says this Jesus Christ has obtained a more excellent ministry. Now let us understand this. He continues to say by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Now I want us to understand that better covenant established upon better promises. It's the better promises, better covenant of which he's a mediator the now Paul sees a fur and says, this man has obtained a more excellent ministry. Now let us define this covenant. Let us understand this covenant. He says, verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Now, he says, if the first covenant, the law of Moses, was not faultless, if it was not without fault, then there would have been no necessity for God to bring another covenant. That means the reason why the second covenant, the New Testament is here, is because the old one has a fault. Now, let me explain this fault. Jesus comes to a rich young man. This man says to Jesus, you know, all of my life I've obeyed the law. And whatever is written in the fathers to do in the in the, in the in the books to do by the fathers and he says everything i feel i have done what must i do that i might inherit what eternal life and jesus told him go and sell all you have and follow me are you hearing me and this young man went away poor i mean sad why because he was very rich <laughs> Because he was very rich. That means if he was poorer. Do you see why some people, the, the richer they become, the harder it is to give and tithe and what? You, you understand what I'm saying? Because it, it starts to take over a certain place in your life. But let me explain this. Jesus is telling us nothing that young man did was bad. Everything was good. Another man comes to him and tells him, oh, good master. And he says, who is good except the law? The law is good. Jesus, in his own words, he says, the law is good. He says, why callest me thou good? None is good, save one. That is God. No, there's a person of scripture that says the law. He says, none is good except the law. For the law is good. There's a person of scripture that says the law is good. You look it up for me. Now, so if the law in its own self is good, why would God fault it? Why would God say that the law is faulty? What is the fault with a good law? I think Paul also says it later in Romans. For the law is good. For by it I understood sin. You see what I'm saying? For without it, you know, I, I could not have understood it. He says, if then I do that which is, I, I would not, I consent unto the law that it is good. Yes, thank you. Paul says it, the law is good. Now, if the law is good and Paul, the same man, is telling you that God found fault with a good thing. Then you must ask yourself, what is the fault with that good thing? And he continues to explain the fault. Verses 8. He says, for finding fault with them, who? The people. He said, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, said the Lord. Oh, 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 who has understood it? Put up your hands if you have. Okay, those of you whose hands are down, I'll explain. He's saying, the law was at fault, because God found fault with people. And so he had a problem with it because it made men fail. Do you understand what I'm saying? For if the first law was faultless, there would not have been a need for the second covenant. Sorry. The first covenant was faultless. There would not have been a need for the second covenant. And he said, and the reason why it had a fault was that it found fault. It found fault with men. They failed under it. That's what he's saying. They failed under it. And when God sees that they're failing under it, he finds the law faulty. Not because it is bad, but they are failing. 
The law says don't steal and they steal. And God has a problem with it. Somebody doesn't understand this yet. And God finds fault with it because you are failing. And if God knew that he cannot relate with you in failure, he cannot re relate with you living a life of fault, living a life of defeat, he says, now I'm going to bring a new covenant. <laughs> if he says, I have brought a new covenant, primarily, that covenant that is coming is supposed to make sure that it causes you to win. Who has understood what I just said? This is the mystery of the New Testament. I told somebody, I will see you in heaven. Because it's not according to what I've done. It's according to the covenant that I accepted. He will not let his righteous see corruption, nor his soul rot in hell. That's settled. I'm going to heaven. If you don't find me there, you're not in heaven. I promise you. You're somewhere else. Somebody shout hallelujah. Now, the covenant that God has given us is to make sure that we cannot fail. Otherwise, itself, it would become faulty. Not because it has done anything, but because he has a problem, you failing. You were not made to die in that movie. You were not, listen, God has not intended you to say, I am believing you, and then you fail. Uh -uh. He says, those that believe him, he shall not put to shame. But it's important not only to know this, for some of you are knowing it now, but it's also important for you to believe it because some of you assume you know it, but you don't have the results of that experience. The realities of truth are supposed to be manifested in our lives, in our daily walk with Jesus. It's one thing to know that it, is, it says so. It's one thing for your mind to assent to it and agree that it is so. But it's another for this reality to enter your spirit that God has not made you to fail. He continues to say, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, verses 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not. So I have a problem that they could not continue. They could not go far. Give me the message version of that. He says, it's not according, or it's not, I'll throw out, he says, the old plan I set with their ancestors when I led them by the hand of Egypt. He says, they didn't keep their part of the bargain, so I looked away and let it go. <laughs> you see, I'm doing this, you do that. And then they fail to fulfill it. Okay, I'm doing this, you do that. And then they fail to fulfill it. And God says, okay, let me let that go away. Let me build something. That only asks for one thing. Only one thing. To believe. A man walked to Jesus and asked him a fundamental question and said, Master, what might we do? What can we do in what you will define as the works of God? He called it works, plural. Because we want eternal life. We want to win in this life. He says, what shall we do that we might work the works? Plural. What must, might we do that we might work the works? We want to heal the sick. We want to raise the dead. We want to lead nations. We want to change our generation. What might we do that we might walk the works, plural, of God? And Jesus tells this man, he says, this is the work. You're talking about works. Me, I want only one thing from you. I, only, I don't want two, I don't want three, I don't want four. Leave the processes that have been given by tradition. He says, this is the little work that I want you to do. One thing only. He says, believe on him whom he has said. Just believe me. 
Just believe me. Just believe me. I'm not interested. Just believe me. That's all. It's only one work. But, but it's only one work. But you see, one work. But I thought there are many works you have to do this. And there's one work. So, because I believe, I just live the way I want. And, and God, those are more fundamental questions. That's, that's a question of somebody who has not understood faith. Because the beginning of our sin is actually working out of faith. Whatever is not done in faith is what? Is sin. So he tells the believer, you only believe me. I'm not interested in where you are. What, you just believe me. I'll straighten out everything else. Your moral life, your family, your ministry, your mind. Do you believe? Yes, just believe me and leave the rest to me. And all God expects you to do is just believe. There are people right now on prayer mountains in unbelief. There are people right now fasting 90 days, but in unbelief. There are people who are sowing seeds, but in unbelief. They're doing everything right outside. The works are evident. The works are evident. That's what was disturbing the Galatians. He says, oh, you foolish Galatians, Galatians 3, who bewitched you. How is it that you should not obey Christ before whom you were crucified? And then he asks them, he that worketh miracles and does wonders and works signs and miracles, uh, uh, signs, sorry, does he do it by your works of the law, but by the hearing of faith? How does God do miracles in your life? How does God do miracles in your life? Does he do it because you are stretching yourself in the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? How does God do it? Give me the message version of that. He says, he, answer this question. He says, are you seeing it up there? He says, does the God who lavishly provides you with his own presence, his Holy Spirit, working things in your life you could never do for yourselves, does he do these things because of your strenuous moral striving or because you trust him to do them in you? How? How? And the answer is simple. Because they trust him to do it. It's in the hearing, I love the KJV, of faith. That means if you want a miracle, sit next to somebody who can give you faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> By the hearing of faith. Oh, plus this. It's not plus. It's by the hearing of faith. Plus, no, 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 no. It's by the hearing of faith. And that hearing of a faith, in what you would want to define in moral, uh, living morally upright and doing right and giving and doing all these things, all of that is as a result of that relationship. It does not come to you as a command. It comes to you out of a yielding spirit that has built a relationship with God. It's like I don't give to get. That's works. I give because I have. And I don't need to have a certain amount of money to believe that I have. You see what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? You live like a king because you believe that you are a king. And circumstances might want to zero you down to look like a beggar. But you can accept to think like a beggar or live like a king. God says only believe. Only believe. The problem is that many of you fear the consequences of failure. Because you have not understood yet that he has not designed you to fail. He has not designed you to fail. So... You fear to try him because you fear to fail. Or you've seen many who failed because they tried him but they were not there 100%. And so you choose to disqualify the best of God in your life and accept with permissible will. What is good and acceptable? Not perfect. And then you live a very predictable life and ask yourself why you're not progressing. And then you start breaking demons of your family. Hey, every spirit that took over my father and my father's father die by fire, by force. Some of you, you have killed devils for 30 years. They are just increasing. 40 years they're just increasing 50 years you've gone to every deliverance service in town they've chased things out of you until you know but nothing is changing why because God is saying it doesn't matter what they chase off you it matters who you believe it matters who you believe 
when I read this thing years ago, oh, 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 when I read it and understood that the reason why I'm in the New Testament was because God wanted to give me a better covenant wherewith I should not fail. Unless you think that Jesus is so dumb to say this by this you will not fail and you fail. But if you know that he is of his word and everything he says is truth, that whatever God has said is true, you're going to start thinking differently. I hope you're, you're coming out of the rent thing. Eh? I hope you're, you're, you're graduating. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you're coming out of that level. Somebody shout hallelujah. The question is not whether God can do it. The question is, are you ready to believe it? We, were, we, we went to school and prayed with many people who seemed like they knew this. They spoke it. They acted it. They could even preach it into somebody and it works. But it never worked in their lives. Why? And the Lord told me this is why. They really never believed it. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he says, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Verses 10. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people and they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother saying, no, the Lord. That instruction is, let me demonstrate God so you know him. No, but rather, every man shall know me from the least to the greatest. You want it to go to a special man of God to say, you know, man of God, speak this word or I die. Uh -uh. Hey, it comes, you know, there is this fear that I've seen around many churches that if you make people less dependent on you, they will leave your church because we have churches that unfortunately have made people They've raised children, they've raised babies, eh? and, and many people in church have stayed babies. You, you understand? They've failed to help people and win them off the milk to go into the meat and learn to fight themselves. Call me when it gets overwhelming, but at least start by fighting. Don't say, headache, apostle. No. No. First fix it if you fail, you say, okay, now let's add. But exercise yourself. So they tell you, ah. To have a successful church, you need counseling. Well, what if they become five million? How do you counsel them? What if they become a billion members? How do you counsel them? And this is what they did not know. That the word of God is counsel. Have you ever, have you ever been in a situation where you had a question, eh? Big question. And then you tune the sermon. And then you had it like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. No further questions. Have, has anybody been there? You see what I'm saying? So, we want to win you off the counseling. Says that you, you have a list of sermons in your head. If, if you have this, you switch on this. Says that when we are meeting, we are meeting with problems of I have a billion dollars, how do I spend it? Those are good problems. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. What happened to the counselor, the person of the Holy Spirit? What happened to him? What happened to the person of the Holy Spirit? The Bible says he is a counselor. He's a teacher, primarily. Somebody shout hallelujah. So he says, I will write this in your spirit. I'll give you an experience where everything is within you. And anything that connects you outside connects to whatever I've put in you. Do you know, some of you, the things you've started hearing in this ministry, you were not hearing. But when you heard them, there was something inside you that agreed. You don't know why. It, it even slaps your theology, but you agree with it. Why? Because the revelation of Christ is in your spirit. It's in your spirit. And God is telling us, as much as we might take this lightly, 
it is fundamentally important to understand that it begins with verses 12. I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more. If, if we can't believe that, we can't believe the rest. Because if you go under the law, the Bible says the law makes priests of whom have infirmities. You'll always be a leader with weakness. You'll always be a priest with weakness. I, this is working, but this is not working. This is working, but this is not working. If you're the kind of Christian who does not have a hundred percent, then ask yourself, where am I functioning under the law? But you know, apostle, you're also complicated. Is it possible to, to be there and there's no problem in the world? Okay, let me answer you. He says, the thief cometh but to steal, kill, and destroy. But he says, but I, Jesus, I am come, that you might have life. And he added, and a few problems. Slap somebody. He says, I am come, that you may have life and have it to the fullest. Amplified says, until it overflows. I'm getting bigger every day. Bigger every day. I'm getting bigger every day. I'm getting bigger. Let's sing it again. I'm getting bigger every day. Bigger every day. I'm getting. That's what you sing. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. The Bible says, from grace to grace, from faith to faith, from glory to glory. The glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former. Bigger every day, I'm getting bigger every day. <laughs> bigger every day, no limitations. I'm taking over. I'm getting bigger. Hallelujah! I'm getting bigger every day. Bigger every day, I'm getting bigger every day. Speak it. Oh, no limitations. I'm taking over. I'm not talking about rentals. Oh, I'm getting bigger every day. Uganda, Africa, Europe, Asia. Come on, sing it. Ministers that are here, come on. Your ministry is leaving Uganda, it's leaving Africa, it's going to Europe. It's going to Asia. Oh, no limitation. Working people that are here, you're getting promoted every day. Promoted every day. You're getting promoted every day. You don't wait for a year. Oh, business people, come on, sing it. I'm increasing every day, increasing every day, I'm increasing every day, say it, increasing every day, no limitation. Somebody shout hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, I'm going bigger every day. I'm forward and only, only forward, only forward, not backward. Uh -uh. Head and not tail, above and not beneath. Somebody shout hallelujah. Fanera is growing every day to the glory of God. The wisdom of God in my life is growing every day in the name of Jesus. Wealth is growing every day. Hey, why? Because this one, this covenant is without fault. Somebody shout hallelujah. But it begins, you may be seated, it begins with the forgiveness of our sins. If you cannot understand that you were forgiven of all of your sins. And somebody said, somebody one time said, you know, past, present, but not future. So I said, oh, so, what about us who were born after he died? What was past? Somebody shout. What about us? Who were born after he had died? Why did he die for? Oh, okay. So the moment you get born again, pop! All your past and present are forgiven. But not your future. 
So you mean the blood of Jesus was just enough for my salvation and my past. It cannot speak into my future. So that means what he did is not enough. I require another sacrifice. I require another sacrifice. But some of us have accepted that we don't need any more sacrifice. The blood of Jesus is sufficient. He says, I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will remember no more. No, remember, he's dealing with a covenant that he found at fault because it found you at fault. So if he's to write another one, he has to make one that cannot find you at <laughs> Glory to God! Shout hallelujah! In Hosea 14 verses 4, he says, I will heal their backsliding and I will love them freely. For my anger, I stand away from him. Who? Israel. Give us a message version of that. He says, For I will heal their waywardness and I will love them. I love the word lovishly. I know why some of you are just looking around like this. Because your definition of lavish is food. No, I'm talking lavishly. God wants to love you lavishly. Now, that is so hard to believe. And the problem is not the truth. No, the problem is that for all of your lives, you've been taught wrong and no wonder you have those results. Now, try mine for three months. <laughs> try this for three months. One man said something. He said, you know, when you preach the truth, people don't come to church. And when you preach deception, people come. I said, then Jesus was a liar. Because 5,000 men follow him without food. What are you talking about? Slap somebody. Tell him you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Now, I want to finish. So I came to the appreciation one day. And I settled it and I said, I will never sin. I know it like I know my name. I know it more than I know myself. I, every day, I exercise myself in the same the Lord God is my witness. This is the one word I say continuously upon my life. One of those words that I say continuously. It is so a part of me that even in my sleep, I would find myself saying it, I can not. Then you wake up and hear your lips say, there you go. And you say, hey, it has happened to me. I'm telling you, this is the one thing that never leaves my lips. Every day, the Lord is my witness. Every day. Every day. It's the one thing that happens so natural in my spirit. I don't know how, but I can't live without saying it. Because for me, it's a revelation. I cannot fail. Oh, days come and they'll shake you a bit. You understand what I'm saying? But to look at the eye of the storm and say, I cannot fail. Devil, you are playing. You are playing. You're playing with the wrong man. You're messing with the wrong person. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. And so because of, 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 of that, he says down here, he says that in that verses 13, Hebrews 8, in that he says that a new covenant, he has made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. He's saying, the Old Testament is ready to leave you if you leave it. It's ready to vanish. It's ready to stop its consequences on your life. If you are saying, you know what? God, I'm ready. That's why the Bible speaks of if there's that portion of scripture that says that if the ministry of the stone was endowed with such glory, if the ministry of the law had such glory, 
that people were not able to look at the face of Moses. The Bible says, how much more the ministration of righteousness shall exceed in glory for even that which was made glorious had no glory in this respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. He's saying, if Moses could have a shining face under the law, he's saying you're supposed to do more. That's what he's saying. And the next line says, for if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remaineth is glorious. Verses 12. Seeing then, he says, that we have such hope. Understand why we, we, look, we, we sound proud. He says, we use great plainness of speech. Did you understand why we talk big? Do you understand why people look at us and they say, these guys are proud? We talk with such... Give me the, the message of that. He's saying, seeing or with that kind of hope to excite us, nothing holds us back in what in confession nothing you don't say i'm going to buy a... why have you kept quiet because they might ask me how uh -uh. he says with that kind of hope we use plainness of speech we don't hold back when we are speaking we speak so big that we start to look strange you see I got tired of being sorry because I believe. Some people have those problems. They, they have problems with us believing. You know, now that is pride. How can you say? People are dying and you, you're talking about this. But I win more souls than you. You mean we're only supposed to tell people to go to heaven and fail to find function on the earth? No. That's not how God has made us. Receive salvation and live big for God. So that the day you go, everyone says that was a general. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody say I refuse to live no more. I'm living big for God. I'm stretching my tent. He says, stretch forth your tent. He says, hold not back. Hey, hey, hey. Hold not back. He says, enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains with high habitation. Spare not. Spare not. Don't say, oh, I fear. I don't have this money. No, 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 no. No. That is not how God works. Some of you budget and you call it faith. There's a difference between budget and faith. Budget is according to your salary. Faith is according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. I'm not saying you shouldn't budget. It's okay to budget for onions and tomatoes. But when it comes to dreaming for the world, brother, you put away your budgets and look to God the author and the finisher of your faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes. Budget for your monthly expenses. But when it comes when to, to having a dream for the world, a dream for Africa, your pay cannot cut it. Your increase cannot cut it. Your income should not be a conversation. Ah, uh ah. -uh. Your promotion is not a factor. No man, no man has enough to fulfill the God-given dream on your life. All you have to do is to close your eyes and say because the ministration of death had such glory, much more the ministration of the spirit that giveth life. And because of that, I have a hope that causes me to speak plainly without any fear, without any hesitation, without any worry that what I've spoken will not come to pass because the covenant Amanda cannot fault me. Somebody shout hallelujah. Oh, I'm big. I'm getting bigger. I'm increasing in the mighty name of Jesus. I cannot fail. Uganda is mine. Ask for yours also. Africa is mine. Speak yours also. Europe is mine. Asia is mine. The islands are mine. The valleys, the mountains, the media. Oh, the entertainment. Hey. And I'm not sorry. Now you're going to get to your feet and we are going to make confessions that are going to break your chairs. You're going to make confessions 
but are going to make even the dead shake a bit and say, what is happening in Uganda? Hey, somebody shout hallelujah. What eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not entered in the hearts of men, the Lord hath prepared for them that love him, and he has revealed it unto us by his spirit. Dream big, speak big. Now open your mouth and speak plainly. Come on, pray. Pray. Come on, pray. Pray. Open your mouth and say, I'm tired of this life. I'm going to the next level. I must go to the next level. Oh, I see the anointing of God moving. My God. My God. My God. Receive it. My God. Come on, pray. The things you do and the way you do them leave me speechless. Make me wonder what I hear people say. I have touched with my hands. Listen to that confession. I have seen with my eyes that you are a miracle working God. Yahweh, Yahweh. Yahweh, Yahweh. Come on, pray. You are worthy of my praise. Come on, create. Create. Take your place. Take your place. Take your place. Stand where you really belong. Come on, pray. Let's sing the verse again. The things you do and the way you do them. Come on, pray. Press in, press in. Make me speechless. Press in. Make me wonder what I hear people say. I have touched with my hands. I have seen with my eyes that you are a mirror. Let's sing it again. The things you do. Leave me speechless. Make me wonder what I hear people say. I have touched with my eyes. Come on, pray. We have time. Shababala de go bara teko. Yahweh, Yahweh. Come on. Worthy of my prayer. Get a hold of it today. Don't leave it on this ground. Don't leave it on this ground. Let this just not be another sermon. I'm talking to a dreamer. I'm talking to a dreamer. I'm talking to a big vision. Oh, Papa Rade Gosinda, Mata Banagosa, Mosa Pacarade, Ropano Gosigata, Maso Paparate, Mako Parade Gesede, Mako Bodogo, Masa Babarade, Rata Katakata, Mata Banegosa, Maso Kotopoto, Mata Rabarade Gose, Mato Katarapa, Maso Paralege, Maro Bodogoto, Mata Katarapa, Masa Katepe. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. 
Sama Belifa, Maso Parade, Ma Prade Gota, Maso Parade, Mara Kotaba, So Parade, Exceedingly, Abundantly, Abound, O Sala Parade, Mato Badiga, So Parade, Pressing, 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 Saba Kota, Masa Parata, Mata Kata, Maporedege, Mata Bogoto, Mata Patala, Rakata Badagata, Sapara Teleta, Mata Patelepa, Kebaya Rando, Rekando Tila, Vera Horovet, Yamanoe, Masobaga, Matoboroto, Mako Parade, Ropa de Gese, Sopara Lago, Ropa de Gota, Masopalege, Masopaya, Kaba Telebono, Matobodogose, Masapara Teleke, Marobodogoso, Masopavalade, Marakatabaye, Oyabalagena. I live with my miracle. I live with my miracle. I live with my miracle. I have had faith. I have had faith. I have had faith. I have had faith. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Mato Baradego. Saparale Kato. I'm changing Uganda. I'm changing Africa. I'm changing the world. We're writing history. Mata Parele. Maso Pataka. Mata Katarapa. Masa Parele. I live a full life. I will live a full life. I will not die early. I will not fail. My marriage will not fail. My children will not fail. My ministry will not fail. My vision is progressing. Plainness of speech. Mata Para. Mato Badiga. So Paralega. I was never meant to fail. I was never created to fail. I don't fail. I cannot fail. I should not fail. I will never fail. Mato Barade. So Pakata. Sabararego. Marabodiga. So Paradega. So Pakata. Masapaye. Mado Badega. So Pandago. Mataya. Kapayarada. Maso Badago. Masapapa. Sakayabara. Matadalaba. Matobodo. Makatalapa. Give back to something. Give back to something. You're not going back as a normal man. You're not going back as a normal woman. You cannot go back the way you came. Legado, Shiba You did not come in the presence of God to go back empty-handed. Jesus never gathered men and did nothing. Matarabade, Sopa Katalapa, Marako Debadiga, Sobayaga, Seketerepa. It doesn't matter the situation. It does not matter how bad your marriage is. It doesn't matter how bad your child is. It does not matter how bad your finances are. It does not matter how bad the report you receive from the doctor is. It matters tonight that you believe. 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 Shapa papala. Marata badigapa. Shopa paratala. Makata badega. Mata palaye. Mago de bada. Mashabale. Matorobodo. Masakata. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Male koriba. Shoparande. Mata badeg. Masharade. Masobogoto. Mkatoraba. Shobala lege. Rapoliga. Somadigato. Mato predege. Marikatolaba. Sopaligato. Madigatola. Sayane. Masopaya. Kataye. Yabalaka. Rapanigota. Sayaraba. Marapanigone. Masopotolo. Sarakanda. Masara. Somaniba. Osikanda. Masorapa. Sabalikato. It must work. 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 Shabalara. Matalapa. Pradagade. Matobadika. Sopata. Soramba. Koralega. Oyebaye. Launch deeper. Come on, pray. Pray. Sharabali. Marokote. Yebanego. Masabade. Rakatoba. Samatele. Marandego. Matopa. Sapale. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Oh, Rakonda. Soparikala. You must go forward. You must.
must progress. So Marele, you must advance in the name of Jesus. Marale Gota, Shaparalega. We go without them. We go without them. We go without them. We go without them. You will make it. We go without them. You will make it. Masopala, Marakote, Erakota. Your trust is in God. Your trust is in God, not horses. Your trust is in God, not chariots. Your trust is in God, not education. Your trust is in God, not your color. Your trust is in God, not your friends. Your trust is in God, not your status. Your trust is in God. Rapala, Matobade, Sopakata, Rabadega, Masabata, Sapaya, Makara, Maradaga, Sobagata, Sarara, Maredego, Mapradigo, Masaka, Sopatila, Magate, one more minute, Matobeliga, Sopapa, Rekata, Somatila, Mandogoto, Sarakata, it is working, it is working in my life, it is working, it is working, it is working, it must work, it should work, it will work, Etabala, Sokamarada, Sopanuga, Matobada, Sokotoko, Mazagata, Sangalale, Marakato, Marikaba, we remember you. Masogo, Masatala, Sekereba. We remember your love. We remember your mercy. We remember your forgiveness. Oh, Saraba. Receive it. Raise your voice, somebody. Raise your hands in the air right now. Hey. Hey. Listen to me. I rarely see what I'm seeing now. It's a rare thing. I've not seen it many times. But when I see it, I can tell when somebody has broken out when somebody has gotten into the zone of changing the world right now in the name of Jesus the Spirit of God is moving and touching you wherever you are in the name of Jesus power valley house somebody is going to the next level of their ministry today somebody is entering the next level of their business listen I, there are people here in a few weeks from now a few months your name is going to resound through the earth that is the kind of anointing i'm talking about receive it receive it prophets receive it may you prophesy not only to your family oh where are they holy spirit where are they holy spirit where are they holy spirit power of holy ghost shabarada gotaba reketele badigo somebody has broken through somebody has broken through somebody has broken that shell somebody is entering a new world put her down put her down just put her down don't drag her put her down somebody has entered a new level Somebody has entered a place where the world must hear you. Receive it. If you're sick in your body, may the word you've had tonight heal you. Heal you. Now, whatever is in your body will have to wait because you have to fulfill a lot. I speak to your finances that they heal. I speak to your marriages that they stand. I speak to your personal life that there is evidence of transformation. You will not fail. You cannot fail. The covenant you're under speaks greater words than the blood of Cain and Abel. Now, give the Lord a marginable praise. Come on, clap for Jesus. 
Clap for Jesus. Clap like you know what God has done. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's do one thing before you leave. I always tell people, this is the part I don't want you to leave because this is the most important time to heaven. The most important. The most important is happening now. And you might walk away and somebody who's supposed to receive Jesus follows you. So, just stand for a few minutes for God that we get men into the kingdom. So, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, come running here. We're out of time. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. This is a new covenant. Those that are slain, bring them in front. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Ask your neighbor if they're not born again. Take only five seconds and preach them to the kingdom. Come. Come and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Come quickly. Jesus is calling you now. Come. Your life is going to change forever. Tonda Yamba Yiguanwa Nire Talu One One more time on there when you saw hurry, please. On there when you saw. Heaven right now is celebrating. Come. Carry. Carry them here. Tell them to come. Anybody else coming? Anybody else coming? Are they over? We want to pray.
I hope they're over. If you're coming, run quickly. Jesus is about to leave. Jesus might leave you. Anyway, your brides walk slowly. But the, the Lord's bride. Some of you walk like you're coming to a wedding. Repeat these words after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Tonight, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Yes, deliverance is taking place. Put up your hands and I pray for you. Right now in the name of Jesus, may the power of the Holy Spirit overshadow you. May God consecrate you and deliver you. May whatever has been troubling your destiny be frustrated right now in the name of Jesus. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, give the Lord a man of praise. Now, those of you who have come, you're going to go there for only three minutes. We want to take your names and your numbers such that we can pray with you and help you understand what it means to be born again. On Sunday, we have two services. One service begins at 9 to 11, and the second service begins from 11 to 1. You, I want you to come from the 11 to 1, because usually the second service is for newer members. Is that okay? Okay, see you very soon. Leave her, just leave her. Just leave her. God is dealing with her. Actually, she has a heart issue. I need Modesta. Come and lay hands on this lady. She has a heart issue. Put your hand on her chest. You spirit of infirmity and disease. Loose in the name of Jesus. We speak healing in Jesus' mighty name. So, see you. Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Venero, make manners.